Hey guys, in this video I just want to discuss why orthotics do not help flat feet. A lot of the questions I receive on the fixed flat feet video are should I wear this orthotic? It hurts. Will it help cure my flat feet? And the quick answer and the truthful answer is no. It will not in any way alleviate you of flat feet. That can only be done through either alignment or strengthening your feet. Well, a lot of the problems that podiatrists have is that they want to treat pronated feet, flat feet, as a cushioning problem. It's actually a springboard. And if you keep thinking about how to alleviate joint pain because you're walking, it may be that your gait is wrong and that the joint pain is from the way that you're walking. It's from the way that you're running. It's not the other way around. It's not the foot is supposed to take the brunt of the pain or the cushioning of the activity. It's actually that you're doing the activity wrong. And so what you want to do is figure out how do you move properly? How do you move in a better, more functional manner instead of trying to mitigate the pain by cushioning bad movement with your feet and letting it take the brunt of the pain. Uh, the problem I have with orthotics is that there is no progression. Usually, if you are progressing through something, it should get better as it goes along. But what you find with most of these orthotics, they just give you a newer version of the same design. And anyone who's tried orthotics, luckily now the, the modern versions are a lot nicer or malleable than the older. But anybody who's had one, I'm 40 years old, anyone who's had orthotics as a child uh, around the 80s, they would know they were stiff and they were painful and they would do or they did do more harm than good because what you have, you have a flat foot being forced to actually have this rubbing against it. And so you would be squeezing, majority of the people who have flat feet have what will be a wide foot also because of the instep has fallen down and has taken up the space. And so now you're trying to fit your foot into this narrow space and you have this piece sticking into your instep. And it's not moving, especially the older versions and, and versions before me which were made of wood or it felt like it, that's how stiff they were, they're gonna basically dig into the side of your foot and cause you immense pain. Now, these aren't orthotics. These are what you'll find in a running shoe. And one of the problems that podiatrists never figure out is that this is not what you should be focused on fixing. It is actually this. Because there is no metatarsal activation, there is no front ray, which is the term for the big toe, there's no activation. And that's the reason why this is sagging. As you can see on these shoes, it would have this high instep, and yet there is no way you'd be able to press this down, especially if you already have a weak big toe. There's no way that you'd be able to press it down. So therefore, you will never get it fixed. Now you have your foot resting, your instep resting on this arch while lifting your feet up. And you will never alleviate flat feet or foot pain with this combination. So the real key to have orthotics would be to allow you flexibility in your toes. If you are looking at the foot as a cushioning apparatus instead of a springboard apparatus, you'll miss out on the majority of the benefits of your feet. 
your feet are basically propulsion equipment. Yes, they do cushion. They do have the ability to cushion. But primarily, they're used to propel you forward. A lot of times people think that they can jump higher or run faster by doing a lot of calf raises. But if you're not engaging the windless mechanism uh, that engages the, the plantar fasci with the dorsiflexion of the front toes, because once this, once this goes up, this comes in and once you engage that in part of your gait you will spring off and therefore you'll run faster that's why a lot of fast runners inherently fast runners were lucky enough most of them to be running barefoot as children but partially why um, you have the um, the proliferation of Ethiopian runners uh, the Jamaican sprinters, their development was done basically barefoot first. They did not heel strike. A lot of these places that were undeveloped, they did not have access to uh, fashionable, thick heeled shoes at such an early age uh, due to poverty or for whatever other reason you have. They didn't have access to this. So when they grew up running, they grew up running with a four foot strike, using their toe to push off. That is the main key of speed. That is the main key of alleviating knee pain and hip pain. If you decide to wear orthotics, trust me, the negative effects will not stop at just the foot. It will actually transgress all the way to the hips, all the way to your back, to your posture. Flat feet are a postural issue. Bottom line, if you have a bad posture, you will have flat feet. You're stymieing the progress of your feet and through that, the rest of your body is collapsing. Your posture is collapsing. You're more than likely you have hyperextended knees, you have an aching hip, you have uh, anterior pelvic tilt, you have a lack of motor um, gluteal activation. That will lead to a winged scapula, rounded shoulders, a forward neck. These are systemic problems that are all rooted at having weak feet and if you can strengthen your feet and get into the position uh, of, of a proper gait you'll find that everything upstream fixes itself you'll then have properly aligned knees you'll have a neutral pelvic uh, region you'll have gluteal activation when you walk you'll have shoulders um, you'll uh, that are not rounded, you'll have a navel that is pulled towards your spine and a proud chest and an alignment of the neck. The basis of your posture are your feet. So if your feet are aligned and, the, and they are strong, that will then affect the knee placement, it will affect the hip placement, and, and once you know that, it will affect the core and then the shoulders then the neck so it is a postural issue a gentleman commented on the video and said oh the only way to fix flat feet is through surgery and I'd like to ask that person if they need surgery to fix their posture and I'm sure he wouldn't pay for surgery to fix his posture and so therefore you should not pay for surgery to fix your flat feet quick fix an expensive quick fix, but it never lasts because you, if you do not know how to engage your body in proper function, you will never truly cure yourself. Remember, our feet are not all the same, so we have different levels of, uh, of instep or arch height, and so there is no aesthetic goal of having a high arch because people who have extremely high arches will also complain of their situation. What you want preferably is a flexible arch 
one that can rise and lower uh, depending on the uh, tensegrity that you uh, place on your foot. When you stiffen it, it holds strong and when you want it to relax, it will relax. That is probably the most preferable version of a foot to have. And the best way to achieve that is to strengthen it because then you can strengthen and relax, strengthen, then relax. If you have it in a constant, uh, constant state of relaxation, it will serve you no good. And if it is on a constant level of high alert, that again will serve you no good. So a flexible arch is really what you're looking for. And that is the, for the most part, what people who have flat feet have. There are no disadvantages to having flexible flat feet. In fact, I'm looking at a study right here published in 2009 that says 200 of 218 kids age 11 to 15, they found no disadvantages in sport performance originating from flat feet. The kids who had flat feet accomplished all 17 motor skills as well as the group with normal feet. The reason why they have flat feet is that they're in the shoe that they're wearing, in the cast that they were wearing, it malformed to the shoe because of the flexibility of the foot. And so now all we have to focus on is regaining the inherent strength of the foot. Orthotics will not help your flat feet. You can go to any orthotic website uh, right now, I have in front of me a, a website by Power Steps. How orthotic insoles relieve flat feet pain is under their art support for flat feet page on powersteps.com. Flat feet cause misalignment to your body when you walk and run. While orthotic insoles can't fix flat feet, they can help realign your body a bit and relieve the pain and discomfort you're feeling. Here it is. They've explained right here that it will not fix, it cannot fix your flat feet. These are people who are selling the orthotics telling you it can't fix your flat feet. So why do you consistently believe that wearing these crutches somehow will fix your flat feet. They will not. It is proven and even the people who sell it will tell you that it doesn't work. So stop using orthotics unless you have other foot issues, but if your only issue for your feet are flat feet, orthotics will not help. What they will do is give you an increased pain. So if you thought you had pain before wearing conventional sneakers, or shoes, or dress shoes with a high heel and nothing in between, then you can imagine when you add this extra level of height to dig into the instep, how you'll feel. You're doing yourself more harm than good. If you want to alleviate your flat feet, first take uh, my video, which shows you five methods, and basically those methods help you with proprio reception, how your foot should feel when it is engaged, when you have tensed it, just like how you would tense a bicep muscle. You know what that feels like. You have not really felt that if you have pronated feet. And if you've been wearing conventional shoes, you've not really had the chance to understand what that feels like. So watch that video first, understand what it feels like, and then progress those exercises to make a stronger foot. One easy way for you to be able to walk as far and to, uh, to work on your feet for eight hours on end is to get the right shoe. These shoes were not made for you. You first messed up your feet as a child, or you didn't, but your parents did. Now, in your adulthood, now you want to use the same concept to strengthen it back. These are the exact things that got you into the predicament that you're in. So the idea is now you have to buy shoes that will engage your feet and will allow your foot the freedom to build up its strength. The right shoe for you is something that is flat, firm, and extremely flexible, and that has no 
heel and that has no toe raise and that is flexible at the center of the toes because the, the, the toe region is the weak point. It is the choke point for the weakness of your foot. And that weakness in your toes will cause a weakness not only in your foot and your instep, but a weakness in your ankles and a weakness in the knee and so forth. So this is the primary focus. Buy the right shoe for you. Don't buy what's fashionable. Buy what makes you feel better, that allows you to move better. When you're walking, use a four-foot strike. Walking or running. It is even more exaggerated when you're running, but use a four-foot strike even when you're walking. And I'll put a video further demonstrating how to walk barefooted, how to walk or run barefooted. And so you can understand that all along, you would never walk or run barefoot with a heel strike. So there's no reason why you should do that now. Understand that the mar uh, marathon runners, all from Kenya and Ethiopia, they started their training barefoot without a heel strike. And if you watch their gait closely, even in current races, they end up with a forefoot. It, it, now, if you're watching at regular 30 frames per second of broadcast TV, it will appear as if they're heel striking. But there's no way with that cadence and that um, the rate of foot um, strike that they are accomplishing that they could really get their heel to overstride and go in front of them, maintaining that tempo. What is happening is a sort of illusion where because of the height of the, of the heel, you don't recognize that they're dropping here first. Because this, to them, is already a forefoot. Without the shoe here, their feet are like this. And this is how they're dropping. But because these shoes are on, it appears as if they're dropping slightly here, and they're not. You'll never see a professional winning world-class uh, long-distance runner put their foot like this. You will see an amateur, though. You'll see the person jogging around your subdivision in, in the suburbs. He will land this way, and he will have knee pain and plantar fasciitis and a myriad of other ailments. Don't follow that person. Don't even follow the people that you see on TV because they're doing it for the sponsorship. If you are a person from a disadvantaged community and, and your only way to survive and to feed yourself and your family is through taking sponsorship, you're going to wear those sneakers. And you're still going to win, but you are going to try and do your best to win in those shoes. Those shoes did not help you win. Air Jordans did not help Jordan dunk from the free throw line. Dr. J did it in Converse, All Stars. The power is inherent. It is not from buying these items. And the only reason for minimalist shoes is not to look cool or to fix flat feet. It is to protect you from the outside elements, primarily. Please share the video and please subscribe. Thanks for watching.